analysing structures in outcrop demands a systematic approach, and at the heart of it is having a framework for describing and measuring the fabrics. We'll look at two distinct types of fabric and look a little at their geometry in three dimensions, which is, of course, how they're being countered in nature. So let's start with something called location fabric, and this is how different grains are organised or located in a rock. Later, we'll look and see what happens if it gets squashed. So let's start off looking at the top one here, which is grain size layering. So this is a location fabric defined by variations in the size of grains in a rock. And we can identify layers of coarse material, finer material, and finer still. And we can pick out the boundary between these layers like this. And define the variations between these boundaries, essentially defining a grading from coarse through finer to finer still in the outcrop. And here's another example on a larger scale where we can see alternations through the road cutting here of sandstone and siltstone. So we're seeing the rock organised on the basis of its grain size. Here's another example with grain size variations in a rock made entirely of gypsum. You can see those dark layers which are significantly coarser grain than the lighter ones in the photograph. So this is of course bedding and we've been looking at sedimentary rocks. The term location fabric is purely descriptive. The term bedding is a genetic term which relates to the fact that these are sedimentary. It's useful having a non-genetic terminology when developing a geological analysis. We can deduce that the feature we can see in the outcrop is bedding, having first established it is a location fabric. But location fabrics occur in other materials. And we can define them not only on the basis of grain size, but also on composition. Here's an example of compositional layering. It's defined by the different proportions of different minerals in different layers. And this is an example of Nisic banding formed in metamorphic rocks. Here's another example where we're dealing with a location fabric defined by different mineral concentrations in different layers. This is in a gabbro. And there's a special term we would apply to this sort of feature, having established it's a location fabric. This is cumulate layering. So another example of a genetic term that arises having described the rock using the purely descriptive term location fabric. Here's another example from an outcrop of carbonates in the French Alps. We can see those white bands and grey bands in the outcrop. Let's zoom in. If we're able to analyse this rock, we see that the pale material is dollar stone, the dark is limestone. So you can see in the top of this view, there's a layer of dollar stone sitting on some limestone. And then in the middle is a mixture of both with limestone at the base. In that mixture, if you look carefully, you can see that the dollar stone is forming clasts, objects that change in grain size up into that thin limestone layer. So this is an example of location fabric defined both by compositional layering and by grain size. Location fabric relates to how grains are organized within a rock. They can be defined by systematic variations in grain size and or systematic variations in composition or mineral concentrations, again, through that rock. So now we can ask what happens if it gets squashed. Let's analyse it. You can still see the location fabric defined by composition or grain size variations. But if we look closely, we can see that the grains are aligned. They have an elliptical shape where the long axes line up. And this defines a new fabric aligned along the red line there. And we can recognise that in both situations. This is called shape fabric, and it's defined by the preferred orientation of grain shapes. So here we can see an example where these clusters of white material, which are quartz and felspar, together with the darker mineral in here, are aligned 
like this. So that's the orientation of shape fabric. Here's another example from some uh, presumably rocks that started life as breccias, where we can see the clasts are aligned like this. So these are a couple of examples of shape fabric defined by the orientation of the grain shapes. So let's go back to this outcrop where we started. It's from the French Alps. Let's look a little bit more carefully. In the outcrop, we can see a, a unit which has got which is green and brown where the coin is, and above it are a couple of layers which are fairly distinctive. We can pick out the boundaries between all these, and then having defined these different domains, we can see what forms them. So these are defined by different types of material. So this is the location fabric. The layers that are carbonate are separated by pelite, which is this slaty material, which has got a pronounced flakiness to it. So let's look at the lower contact here, again in a little bit more detail. You'll see there's a two euro coin there for scale. And here's the boundary between pelite on top and carbonate below. Look at the pelite, and you can see that it's got this irregularity picked out by these red streaks now. So there's a, there's a fabric in there that is wavy, or a crenulated fabric. In the carbonate, Below, there is no crenulation fabric. This is interesting because our two rock types here deformed in different ways. So different layers have different deformation fabric. And so the deformation is enhancing the location fabric, making it easier for us to recognise. Here's another example from southwest Wales. This is all limestone. But some parts of the limestone have picked up a shape fabric and they are the slightly more broken components. Other parts which don't have the fabric look more intact and the boundaries between those are running like this. So the location fabric is being enhanced by the shape fabric. Consequently, the deformation is allowing us to see bedding the location fabric in these limestones more easily. Here's another example, perhaps more classic, which is a sandstone siltstone couplet. We can see the location fabric running across there, which is bedding, and the shape fabric below, which is actually a cleavage formed within the finer grain siltstones below, but not in the sandstone on top. Well, location fabrics like bedding are generally planar features. And you might also think that shape fabrics are also always planar. Cleavage here is a plane too. Well, let's think about shape fabrics in three dimensions. And in order to do that, we should think a little bit about dimensionality. So in describing linear and planar fabrics, let's consider this. Situation two is what we generally consider. Sheets, so bedding planes, cleavage planes, they form a foliation. But of course, objects don't have to be sheets, like pieces of paper. They can also be linear, like pencils, in which case the fabric is linear and the structure is called a lineation. Or they can have no preferred orientation at all, in which case, statistically, the objects are spheres or balls. So the shapes of grains in rocks can have these three forms. Here's how it might work then, and consider just squashing a, a, a die. No shape fabric means every face looks undeformed. If there's a plane of fabric only, then some faces will look undeformed, rather like a deck of cards. In the linear fabric only, this rodding structure, looking at the ends of the rods, they look statistically circular still, so don't look deformed. It's looking at the other two faces that the rod shapes are elongate. And then in the case on the right, all surfaces will be deformed. The rock will contain both a linear and planar fabric element. These features provide a terminology. These types of rocks are called tectonites. S stands for schistosity, 
or planar fabric. L stands for lineation. So an S tectonite has only a planar rock fabric, an L tectonite has only a linear rock fabric, and an LS tectonite has both. These sorts of tectonites form under different deformation conditions. So these types of observations are important to make. Here's an example of an L tectonite. Looking onto an outcrop face, this rock almost looks like extruded toothpaste. It's an L tectonite. Here's an example of an LS tectonite. It's quite difficult to picture these in three dimensions. We're looking onto a foliation plane. The end of the outcrop there is the side view. And looking down on the foliation plane, you can see an elongation of the minerals. So this has got both a planar fabric, which we're looking onto, and on that planar fabric, the minerals are streaked out. So it's also got a linear fabric. So this is an LS tectonite. It has both linear and planar fabric elements. In terms of measuring these, the schistosity, a planar fabric, can be measured as a plane, so we'll have a strike and a dip. A linear fabric will be measured as a line, so we'll have a plunge and a plunge direction. And an LS tectonite, well, you'd measure both. So we have a systematic framework now for describing the fabrics we find in outcrop that do not require us to jump straight away to a genetic set of terms. These terms, location fabric and shape fabric, are entirely descriptive. So it's a good way to start. Location fabric defined how different grains are organised in the rock, defined by grain size variations or grain type variations. Shape fabric simply defined by the preferred orientation of the long axes of grains in the rock. Deformed rocks commonly contain both a shape fabric and a location fabric. So we have a strategy for discriminating between these now. And it's the application of these terms and approaches that allows a geologist to embark on unravelling the structural history of outcrops like this one in the Alps.